Welcome to Dimes Block of the Month. This month we'll be doing the package block. I'm PJ Wong and I'm going to walk you through all the steps to make this block. We'll be building the piecing part in my block piecer and then we'll be doing the embellishments in my quilt embellisher. A uh, couple new techniques this month. We're going to be working with the combine functions so that we get the stippling that's going around all in one solid piece instead of a bunch of little pieces as the patches are going to be done. And then also the ribbon that's going down the middle of the package is actually done as an applique. So this is a picture of the block. This is what the block looks like when it's actually been stitched out. And then this is a fun little layout using different colors. I kept the ribbons all the same to tie them together, the ribbons and the bows, and then I used different prints for the packages. So, we'll get back to here and we'll go ahead and start and I'm going to open up my block piecer. And of course you're going to see the My Inspiration page when you open up your software and don't forget to download your designs. Okay, so we're going to start with a new page and I'm going to build, just to start with, a square in here the size that I want my finished block to be. And in this case, this doesn't have to be filled because I really just need the outline, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make this 7 inches by 7 inches because I know that will fit into my 8 inch hoop with the seam allowances. I'm going to apply that and I'm going to go up here to my uh, measurement tool, my ruler bar, and center the origin of that. So now it's perfectly centered. So I'm going to start building the artwork for this kind of from the outside going in. So I'm going to set up my um, borders first and the top and the bottom are going to go all the way across and then the sides and then I'll go in and build my package and the bow. Okay, so for this part I do want this to be filled. I need to click off of that first. So I'm going to go back in and pick up my rectangle tool. This is filled. I'm going to say apply. I'm going to choose just kind of a background color here so that we can see where our blocks are actually going. So I'm going to start by going up at the top and I have my grid set at half of an inch. So I'm going to have one inch borders on this. Okay. So I'm going to select that and I didn't apply this. So, all right, now I'm going to go in and build the rest of my parts here. Choose my color. So there's my bottom and then here, whoops, I kind of got click happy there. I'm just going to delete those. All right. So we've got our two pieces of artwork. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to go back in here and build our sides. And my snap to grid is on, so I have to get close to my grid lines, but it will snap into place. Okay, so there's all of my borders. So now I'm going to build my package. And let's see here. I'm going to build, so my bow is going to end up going in here. So my package, I want my package to come down in here. So I'm going to change color again and here's my package. There's my package and then my bow. Once again I'm using triangles for my bow and so I'm going to build my triangles with a square. So there's my square. I'm going to go into my shape tool and then I'm just going to delete this corner. So there's the top part of my bow or half of it. I'm going to go back to my select tool and then just copy and paste and then rotate that around. So there's my bow. 
So I need to just fill in my corners and then my center triangle here. So this is the perfect time to use the triangle tool because my triangle is going to be this shape. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom and just drag it up to the top. And once again it'll snap into place. I can change the color of that. And then I just need to fill in my little side blocks here. So once again back to my rectangle tool. I'm selecting my color and then just dragging my sections in here. So everything that's going to be this tan color is actually going to end up being white in my real life block. So I am just going to arrange this stuff back up here. So here are all of my background bits and I can start previewing my fabrics now. So with all of that selected and all of that put together. So, oh, just notice something. So over here, I've got my original box. I can delete that now because I've got my borders in place. That was just a guide so that I would know where to place all of my other parts. So with that selected, I can just hit my delete key and now I have all of my parts. So selecting all of this, I'm gonna go up to my fabrics and I'm in my beach sewing and I'm gonna make the background of that all white. So if I click off, you can see that a little bit better. It's just my white on white background. For my package, I'm going to go in here. And again, you can preview all different kinds of fabrics. If I can go in here, I could do my pink checks or my dots. You can see exactly how that's going to look. That actually would look pretty good if this, if my bow, I could do my bow. I'm going to select both of those together and I could make my bow maybe yellow checks and it would go well with the package. Although in this case I think that that package is not going to show up overly well with the white background. So I'm going to make this a darker color. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to make this, we'll do the green check. I like the green check. So there's my green check. And then for my bow, I actually want to use my dots. So I've got some dots in here, different dots, stripey dots. So there we go. So there's my bow. All right. So what we're going to do now is set up all of our stitching. This one actually is not showing up as well as I would like it to. So I'm going to choose different dots. I think I have a couple different dots in this collection. Or maybe I don't. This stripe dots. That's a little bit better. So when you're in here, in your fabric properties, you can actually, if you want to visualize this in a different spot, so see how the green is almost, it's right next to the green down here. If I change this, by just moving my slider bars, I can adjust where my colors are falling. So I like that a little bit better. It gives a little more contrast between the bows and the um, check. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces in place. So now the center ribbon, we're actually gonna do that as an applique piece. So it's not gonna be part of this piece section. But we'll deal with that um, when we get to the embellishments and I'll explain how to actually make that piece. So I'm just going to select everything on my screen and we're going to go in and we're going to build our parts. So I'm going to go into the workflow and I'm going to change this to 3 eighths of an inch for my seam allowance. And again, I'm just going to leave this on paper because I know that that will fit into my hoop. And I'm going to tell it to auto build. And I'm going to sort my numbers. So now it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's, oh, here's my 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And you can preview that and you can see that it's all going to hoop 
it's all going to stitch in one hooping, which is exactly what we want. And here's your number one block right there. Okay, so I can just save that. And once again, I'm going to go to my C dime designs, my block of the month folder, and I'm going to call this package. And 375 is my seam allowance. All right. So I'm just going to say save to that and it's going to give you this little screen that is going to show you your preview of all the files it just built for you automatically. So here is all your, this is your piecing file, your artwork file, which we'll need for the next step, and then a preview. So here's your block again with all of your numbers, your piecing file, and then your step by steps and in this one there's quite a few because there's quite a few parts but you've got your placement and then where you start with your right side up and then all your seaming and all your tack downs okay so I can close out of this now while this is still selected I'm going to go in and set up my cut file so I'm going to go to my cutter and once again, this is fine leaving it at paper because um, this will just go to PDF, which for this is fine. And I'm going to change my seam allowance so that it matches up with the file that I just created. And I'm going to apply that. And you can see that broadened out my seam allowance a little bit here. So this is just showing you the parts that you need. So here's all my background pieces. It's going to print in two different pages and I'm simply going to save that. And I'm going to put this in my package folder and I'm going to call this cut files and save. And once again, you're going to get the preview window up. Here's your actual cut files. So once again, this is showing you if I go down, this is what this preview is showing you. And you've got all of the other parts here. Okay, so then you've also got a preview, again your block, and then this next portion shows you how much fabric it's going to take to cut each of those pieces at the whatever width fabric you chose. Okay, so that's all of that, and I can just close this now. And that's everything that I need to do in my block piecer. So we're going to switch over to my quilt embellisher and work with the embellishment sections. So here I am in my quilt embellisher and once again the my inspiration today page and don't forget to download your free designs. So I'll just close this. I'll open up a new page. Once again, I'm going to, it'll come up as default to your sequence view and I'm going to switch to my library. So here is my block of the month folder and here's my package. And again, if you, if this isn't refreshing automatically for you, just right click into the designs and tell it to refresh. So here's my package. So this is my piecing file and this is my artwork. So. I'm going to just left press and drag my artwork into position onto my page and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say center origin. Okay, so I've got my artwork on my page. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do is work with my background. So if I were to select my background, actually I need to ungroup that first, so ungroup and then select my background. So now just my background is selected. If I were to simply go here and apply my stippling, I'm going to change that to a darker color so it's a little easier to see. When you have really tight stippling, it's not real obvious, but I'm going to show you. Can you see the breaks in here? And each one of these is basically the shape of the patch that was sewn. I would actually prefer my stippling to cross my joins as all one background piece. So I'm going to back up here and take off that stippling. So in order to get that, and 
actually maybe I can show you this a little bit better if I make my stippling bigger so if I make my stippling five so there you can really see like these not really what I want okay that was just a little more obvious okay so in order for that to not happen what you need to do is combine all of your background pieces together so I've got that all selected and I'm going to go up here to my combined function and now instead of multiple pieces of artwork I have just one piece of artwork in here so now when I go in here to my stipple it's doing the entire background of that which is exactly what I want so again I don't probably want it quite that stippled so I'm gonna change my stitch to three and I'm gonna change my density to five it'll just make it a little bit more open it'll stitch a little bit faster but that's how you get your background all to stitch at the same time in one chunk as opposed to multiple little tiny sections you would have a lot of stops and starts so there's my background all taken care of now for my bows if we look at my picture I just did a little offset in here so to do that we're gonna select this so we're just gonna right click this is selected we're gonna right click and we're gonna go to utility and we're gonna say create outline you'll get this menu up I want this to go to the inside and I only want one repeat and I'm gonna try a quarter of an inch sometimes you have to just play and see how this turns out I'm gonna say that's pretty darn good so when this comes in it's automatically artwork I'm gonna just turn that into stitches and I want that to be a bean stitch and three repeats is fine and I'm gonna make it a 4.0 stitch length okay so you could copy and paste this or on this side I'm just gonna walk through this again just so that you can see it when you're doing this for real live you could just copy and paste this over to the other side but just to run this over again I'm gonna select this piece I'm gonna right click go to utility create outline gonna give it a 0.25 and I want it to go to the inside and I just want one repeat and I'm gonna say okay to that and then turn that into stitches and tell that to be a bean stitch with a 4.0 okay so now we've got our embellishments our stippling and our bow embellishments so now it's time to do our stippling for our package I'm gonna break this up into two different chunks because in reality we're gonna have a ribbon that goes down the center of this so to identify that ribbon for now I am just gonna put in a piece of artwork and I want this to be filled so I'm gonna say apply to that and I'm gonna do this in this crocus color so hopefully it's easy to see so here's my center I want my ribbon to be one inch wide and it should be bouncing right to that grid because I've got my grid on so there is where my ribbon is gonna be okay so to make this ribbon what I did was I just figured out how tall this was so if you look in here this is three inches tall so I actually made it's three inches tall and one inch wide so when I made my ribbon piece that I was going to applique down I just cut a piece of fabric that was two inches wide and four inches tall and I turned both ends in a half of an inch actually it was ever so slightly less than half of an inch and then I just turned my centers in so there were the raw edges were going down the center and I had clean finished all the way around the sides so you want this to end up being just ever so slightly longer than three and a half because your stitching is going to fall right at three inches or you could pull your stitching in just slightly you need to stitch down the ends of that though all right so there is my ribbon the representation of my ribbon so I want stippling on this side and on this side but it doesn't need to go behind the ribbon 
So I'm just going to draw a couple of more boxes in here and I'm going to change the colors of these. And I'm just dragging these in. And then I'm going to turn those boxes into stippling. So I'm just going to select both of the boxes from over here on my sequence bar. And I'm going to go up to my stippling function. And those are now turned into stippling. So in your stippling, I'm just leaving this at the standard maze stippling. But you've got different choices in here. And you can play with these depending on what you want. So the Hilbert, I'm going to take this and move this out of the way so you can see a little bit better. And I'll turn off the grid. So with the Hilbert, it's going to go all the way out to the border of your artwork. And it's going to actually stitch down the sides. This one, if I turn this back to just the maze, and then I pull this out of the way, you'll see that this is going to stay within the boundaries. And actually, maybe if I back this up, I'll turn this back into maze, and then I'll hide this artwork. That'll be there. That's a little bit easier to see. Oh, I didn't turn this back into maze. So there's maze apply. OK, so can you see the difference in the stippling? I don't want my stippling to actually stitch into my seam line at all. I really want it to sit within that piece. So I'm choosing this one. So I'm going to turn this one back into maze. There's also piano. Piano also goes down the edges, but it's a more horizontal design. So back here to maze. And then I'm going to choose both of those. And I'm going to, again, make that a 3.0 stitch and probably a 5. Yep, that's a little, it's just a little bit looser. It will also match this stippling because I think I set that up as a 5 as well. OK, so we've got our two stippling sides. So we're going to need a placement line for our ribbon. So I'm going to turn my package back on so I can tell absolutely where that stops and starts. So to do my placement line, I'm just going to use a run stitch. And I'm going to go down to the bottom and up to the top. And even though my grid's not on, my snap to grid is still working. And then I'm just going to go across the top of there and then down. And right click to stop. So this, I'm going to turn this yet a different color, mainly because I want it to, I want to be able to tell where my parts are, or where to stop and start. Okay, so that can be a standard stitch, and that's just a three. So I could have just gone straight up here and stopped, and then jumped over to here, but this way I'll have just a tie on and a tie off, as opposed to having to tie on, tie off, jump, tie on, and tie off. So in this case, I'm choosing to just make that one solid piece. And if I go to my command, I can look here, and I've got normal, normal, and I want this to tie in and tie off. So I'm just going to say OK to that. So that basically is the placement now. I'll have a placement line for my ribbon. And it's really mainly for the sides, because the top and the bottom are going to be even with your package, which is already going to be pieced in the hoop. So I now need to do my tack down stitch for my ribbon, which is going to go right down the center. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to build a line. I'm actually going to start from the bottom and go to the top. All right, so there is my line. Now, I am going to use So I'm going to use a motif for this. And this is your motif command. And here's all of your different motifs. There's tons of them in here to choose from. And you kind of have to just play and see what's going to work the best. So we could try this one. So that is not quite wide enough. But you can go in here and you can change your pattern length. So I'm going to give this a 20. That's still not quite wide enough. Let's try 25. 
and this is actually in millimeters so which that would be basically an inch so that would work pretty well and that would get all your sides tacked down and then we need to add a separate tack down for the top and the bottom so I'm gonna I'm gonna call that one good and I'm gonna turn that a different color just so it's easier to see and then we're gonna simply add a tack down at the top and the bottom so I'm gonna zoom way in here and I'm gonna turn my grid back on I'm actually gonna change my grid to an eighth of an inch because I want I want to know where this is going to fall and I want my tack down stitch to be just below where my ribbon starts so I'm going to put this in that's an eighth of an inch so this is a sixteenth of an inch I'm just kind of eyeballing this and splitting the difference so just left click left click and then right click and then I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom and I'm going to reorder this because I want this to tack down first. So here's my little tack down stitches and I'm going to change those to the same color as this decorative stitch and they can be at 3.0 stitch length and I want those to run first. All right so there is our ribbon and it's tacked down so our embellishment for the package block is all done now all right so I'm gonna save this file so I'm gonna save as and I'm gonna find my package that's in my C dime designs block of the month package and once again I want I to, just to help with filing I'm gonna use the front end of this name and then just make the back end of this EMB for embellish and I'm gonna save that file okay so let's look at the order that this is gonna run in really quick before we go any farther so here is my stippling stitch this is artwork so the artwork can go up to the top and then the rest of this oh no we still have more artwork in here because this was an artwork piece which really was just the placement for my ribbon which that can actually we could get rid of that now and you can always turn those off so that you can see what's going on so I should now have here's my stippling in the background and then my ribbon stitching then my package stippling here is the placement so I know where to put my ribbon down and then it's gonna tack the top and the bottom and then it's gonna go into oh there's my there's my top here's my bottom and then it's gonna tack everything else down okay so that's all good we can collapse that so our artwork is up here you can turn that back on if you want but from here to here is all of our embellishment okay so save that and now I'm gonna go and pick up my piecing and we'll join the two together so once again I'm gonna put in my basting stitch to hold my back in place so once again with my rectangle tool I'm going to use the little crosshairs to line up with the stitching lines here and I'm just dragging out my rectangle and it was filled so I really just need that to be an outline once again I want to turn that a color that isn't like any other color in my design so I'm going to tell that to be crocus so I'm just going to right click and then I'm going to turn that into a run stitch and it's a basting so I'm going to give it a four stitch length and I'm going to apply that okay so now I'm going to go back to my embellishment design I'm going to select all of my embellishment parts so I'm going to select the first one and hold down the shift key and select the last one 
I'm going to copy this and then put it into my package and say paste. Okay. So you can see how all that is going to set up. Now if I turn on the true view, it's a little easier to see. You've got all your stitching lines in there. Okay. So then I'm going to copy once again my basting border because we're going to again stitch that first so that all of our um, piecing parts are in the right numbers and in the right order. So I'm just going to collapse that again so we have a little bit of view here. So here's my basting border again just copy and paste and then I'm going to move that second one down to the bottom. Okay so that is all of my embroidery file and I'm simply now just going to do a file save as and I'm going to save this as all because this is all the designs together. And at this point I could actually save that also out to whatever my machine format is. Save as so I'm going to save this as a PEZ file so I can go and I can stitch that. Okay so we'll run through this design so the very first thing that's going to happen you're going to load up your monster block maker with your base block your batting and your base top block you'll stitch the last color in the design first which is going to base those layers together and it'll trap your batting inside then you're actually going to start running through from the start of the design and all of these designs or all the stitches here are going to line up with all of the information from your preview sheet from my block piecer and this one has a lot of sections in it so um, by putting this basting border even though you stitch it first by putting it last it will not throw off all these numbers and this one would get quite confusing because there's quite a few of them that everything would be one off so okay so let's just run through this with the slow redraw so I'm gonna double click this and get everything in the in the view there we go alright so again you would stitch your final stitch first to tack your base blocks into place and then it's gonna run through and it's gonna give you all your placement stitches with your numbers oh, kind of zipped right through that okay so this stitching is the tack down for your first piece which is going to be done face up then it's going to go into all of your seaming pieces and all of your tack downs your final tack downs so seam tack down seam tack down okay and then this is your first basting border and that's going to tack down your fashion fabric back if you're doing quilt as you go. If you're doing um, a whole cloth back you can skip that step. So it will tack your fashion fabric back down and then it's going to start all your embellishments will that will stitch through that fashion back. So here's all of your stippling. And then here's the decoration for your bow. And here's the stippling for the package. This is going to be the placement for your applique ribbon. You would place your ribbon and then the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to tack down the top and the bottom and then it's going to go through and do the decorative stitch over the top of everything. And then once again it's going to that last tack down you actually don't need to stitch that because you stitched it first. Okay so that's everything for the package block. Let's take a look at the picture again. So here's your applique ribbon and your little offset borders in your bow and your stippling and your stippling in one piece going all the way around. Okay, that's it for the package block.
Hope you have fun with that. We'll see you next month. Thanks. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to, with all of this selected, I'm going to copy this. 